Hello, my name is Patrick Emberle, and as many of you will know here already, I have taken on the role of Wim Winter's nemesis on the internet. I quickly want to point out that I have nothing against him personally, or rather I didn't have until it, I discovered that not only did he shadow ban me, but that he also systematically removed comments that he found embarrassing. On a musical side, he has published some interesting videos, uh, including some of his own playing, which I still watch with pleasure to this day. I'm thinking particularly of his Bach recording and his Haydn, even some of the Mozart. My reason for doing this work is that obviously I think Wim is wrong in his argument, and that although he will most likely never have any luck with serious musicologists, he has a lot of appeal on the internet, which is where people look out for information. So I think he needs to be countered on the platform he has chosen for the dissemination of his ideas. My aim is to publish a substantial enough body of videos which presents all the counter evidence needed for people who question what they hear on Wim's channel so that they can have access to the information they need to draw their own conclusions. Many of you already know most of what I'm talking about, but again, since Wim is delay deleting comments, it is sometimes impossible to see some things which have been posted a while back. In this video, I would like to address Wim's claim about mail cell metronomes instructions. He made a long video about it, in which he proudly claimed that actually, despite all the appearances, mail cell was talking about double beat. I won't go into the details of this. If you are not already familiar with the video, you can go and watch it on his channel. To me, as to most people, the text is perfectly unambiguously single beat. It seems to me that to read this text as a double beat document, you have to start by wanting it to be double beat in the first place. The mere fact that this text was for a long time a thorn in Wim's argument, because he also saw it this way, demonstrated quite plainly. It apparently took a good deal of persuasion by Lorenz Gadion for Wim to see that there was, there was, in fact, a way to interpret the text as a double beat. But as it happens, this is not the only text we possess by Melzel. And although Wim usually is well researched in his sources, I am not sure he was or is aware of this particular one. This is another text published by Melzel, I think in 1808, because he was unhappy about the way some composers were using his metronome. The best thing I can do is to read at least the relevant part of the text to you in translation. I'll start from the beginning. It's not very long. As experience still daily teaches me how little musicians are able to use the division of my metronome in a convenient way, which erroneous use has crept in by not being considered much more than a black forest clock. This is why I think it's necessary to recommend the following words. I have systematically classified the musical movements, which was previously in disorder by my metronome, and the table attached to the explanation may hereby prove what has been said. This is a bit tedious. Table one shows the gradation from the slowest to the fastest paced increasing movement. This breaks down into three main parts. Part one, slow, adagio. Two, moderate, andante. Three, fast, allegro. I divide this movement back into three parts as First, very slow, slow, not very slow. Two, very moderate, moderate, somewhat fast. Three, moderately fast, fast, very fast. Now, this is for the part which is relevant and interesting to us. I assume the number 80 as a center, because in this number, the three fundamental movements unite, depending on whether one wants to designate either an eighth note, a quarter note, or a half note with it. 88 notes in a minute are slow, 
80 quarter note moderate and 80 half note fast. 80 half note I call fast because in a four four bars, 40 bar fell into one minute. 120 half notes I call very fast because 60 bars in the course of one minute form the whole bars. The text continues, but I think it is enough. It is completely, utterly unambiguous. When he says 80 half notes I call fast because in a 4-4 four, four bar, 40 bar fell in one minute, there is simply no other way to understand the sentence than accepting the simple truth, which is that Melzell thought of his metronome in single beat. Now you might think you might think that okay, Melzell thought single beat, but it doesn't mean that composers did. But actually, it's not so simple. Beethoven and Melzell knew each other very well until they fell out in 1813, and it is therefore impossible but are at least highly, highly improbable to imagine that Beethoven would have used his metronome in a way which was not the one intended by Melzell. Or at the very least, that has he done so, he would have written explicitly about it. There are even further implications. If Beethoven worked in single beat, which in the light of this is pretty unquestionable, then we have to accept that so did Czerny, who worked with him and gave metronome marks for all Beethoven sonatas. And if Czerny did, then so did Liszt and Kulak, who studied with him. And if Liszt and Kulak are single beats as well, it is very difficult to imagine that Chopin was double beat. Not completely unconceivable, of course, just very unlikely. For again, if this was the case, and that Chopin had somehow decided to use his metronome in a different way, it is absolutely inconceivable that there would be any written trace of this anywhere. Chopin was one of the most successful teachers of his time. He taught numerous students who wrote extensively about his teachings. We know a lot of him in that respect. If there really were two uses of the metronome going along at the same time, we cannot reasonably think that there would be that there wouldn't be masses of documents about it. Let us not forget that the metronome was invented to make reliable and fixed something which until then has been highly subjective. So what would be the point of complicating the system by having two possible uses? with no text ever specifying it, and no mention as to whom was using one or the other. It would completely defeat the whole point behind the invention. Let us remember that the biggest flaw about the double beat theory is the complete absence of documents, at least so far, which would, could tell us about his existence. Wim keeps promising important and definitive pieces of evidence but so far, after 20, some 20 years of research about it, he has not come up with anything conclusive, only hypotheses that he is very keen to present as proof. I have talked about some of his claims in previous videos, like his ideas about Novello or Kulak, and I will do it again. But the main thing is that if we accept Melzell as single beat, and I think in light of the text I've just read, we have to, then Wim is left with nothing tangible when sources for single beats are many, important and precise. I could just mention the Xerni Opus 500, the Mushless Fetis methods, and the texts aforementioned by Melzell himself, but there are many more. I would like to conclude by words from Piano Travek to whom I'm hugely indebted as far as sources are concerned. Therefore, if double beats ever existed, it is really, really highly unlikely. There is just too much stuff which isn't right with it. I'd say that the existence of double beat is as unlikely as the existence of the flying spaghetti monster. You can't prove it doesn't exist, but it is so unlikely that we can safely assume it doesn't. 
this is enough for now. My aim is to try to do a reasonably large number of relatively short video, all targeting precise points. I don't intend all of them to become hotbed for heavy discussions. And certainly the people who are, who are already convinced by what I have to say should not waste their time in watching these. I simply want them to be like books in a library, available for people who would want to consult them at any given time. If you have gone this far, thanks for watching.